Okay, we're going to go ahead and continue on with configuring and compiling the project. Project specific settings are configured in the options for PCB project dialog. This is found under your home tab, in the project menu, and then within options. The project options includes the error checking parameters, the connectivity matrix, the comparator setup, ECO generation, output paths and netlist options, multi-channel naming formats, default print setups, search paths, and your project level parameters. These settings are used when you compile your project. Project outputs such as assembly, fabrication outputs, and reports are set up from the outputs tab of the ribbon. These settings are also stored in the project file, so they are always available for this particular project. So when the design is compiled, a list of pins in each net is built in memory. The type of each pin is detected, uh, for example, input, output, passive, etc. And then each net is checked to see if there are pin types that should not be connected to each other. For example, an output pin connected to another output pin. The connection matrix tab of the options for project dialog is where you configure what pin types are allowed to connect to each other. For example, look down the entries on the right side of the matrix diagram and when you locate the output pin, and you can read across this row of the matrix until you get to the open collector pin. The square where they intersect is orange indicating that an output pin connected to an open collector pin on your schematic will generate an error condition when the project is compiled. You can set each error type with a separate error level from no report through to fatal error. Simply click on a colored square to change the setting. Continue to click to move to the next check level. So let's go ahead and make a few changes, or a change rather, to the connection matrix. Uh, if it's not already open, go ahead and go to the project, project options to open the options for project dialog, and then go here to the connection matrix tab. To change one of the settings, we simply click directly on the colored box. It will cycle through the four possible settings, and also note that we can right click on this dialog to display a menu that lets you toggle all settings simultaneously including the ability to restore them to their default state. Our circuit only contains passive pins on the resistors, capacitors, and the connector, and input pins on the transistors. So let's go ahead and set the connection matrix to detect unconnected uh, passive pins. Every pin in our design should be connected, so this will let us know if we happen to miss anything when wiring. Look down the row labels to go ahead and find passive pin and then look across the column labels to find unconnected, which really don't have to look far. The square where these entries intersect indicates the error condition when a passive pin is found to be unconnected in the schematic. The default setting is green, indicating that no report would be generated. Let's go ahead and click on this intersection box until it turns orange so that an error will be generated for an unconnected passive pin when we compile the project. We will have to purposely create an instance of this error later to check it, since I am sure you wired your design together perfectly. Let's next go to the Comparator tab. The Comparator tab in the Options for Project dialog sets which differences between files will be reported or ignored when a project is compiled. In general, the defaults on this page will always be used. If you need more detailed control, then you can selectively control the comparator using the individual comparison settings. For this tutorial, it's sufficient to confirm that the ignore rules defined in PCB only option is enabled at the bottom of this dialog. When we compile our project, it is checked for drafting and electrical errors based on the settings we have defined for our project. Any detected warnings, errors, or fatal errors will then be displayed on the messages panel. If we double click on a compiler generated message, Circuit Studio will quickly navigate to these items within our design to make the process of finding and resolving these errors very fast and efficient. So with the project options closed, we're gonna go ahead and compile the multivibrator project. Uh, quickest, easiest way to do this is to right click on the project within the projects panel and select compile PCB project. 
Once the project is compiled, all warnings and errors would be displayed in the Messages panel. Note that the panel will only appear automatically if there are errors or fatal errors detected. To open it manually, we click on the View tab, and then we can click on the Messages panel button. And if there were any errors or warnings, they would be displayed here. Since, of course, all of our circuits are drawn correctly, the Messages panel should not contain any errors. If there were errors, you would work through each one, checking your circuit and ensuring that all wiring and connections are correct. Since we did such a great job on our schematic capture, we are forced to deliberately introduce an error into the circuit and recompile the project. So looking at the multivibrator schematic document, we want to make the schematic sheet the active document if it is not already. Go ahead and click in the middle of the wire that connects R1 to the base of Q1. Small square editing handles will appear at each end of the wire and the selection color will display as a dotted line along the wire to indicate that it is selected. Go ahead and press the delete key to remove the wire. And then we're gonna go ahead and recompile the project. So again, we're gonna to go to home. We can do this again from the right click here, but also from the home menu under the project menu, we can go to compile to check for errors. The messages panel will now display error messages indicating that you have unconnected pins in your circuit. Because they are errors, the messages panel will open automatically. If these were just warnings, the messages panel would not be forced into view. Now, when we double click on an element within the details view of the messages panel, Circuit Studio will navigate to the element, making it easy to find and resolve issues in your schematic. To clear all the messages from the messages panel, right click and select clear all. But before we finish this section of the tutorial, let's go ahead and fix that error in our schematic. Rather than redrawing the wire, we're just going to go ahead and press the undo button or press control Z for the shortcut. And to check that the undo was successful, just recompile the project and check that no errors were found. The messages panel should show no errors. Mine did not pop up, but let's go ahead and take a look at it just to make sure no errors found. And then let's go ahead and save our schematic and our project because we've made changes in both with file, save all. Now that we've completed and checked our schematic, it is time to prepare the blank PCB that we created earlier.